This is Alaska, and in this episode, the real journey begins. We are going to the north, finally, and I'm so happy about it. We head up into the mountains and get a lot more snow than we bargained for. We meet some of Alaska's less dangerous furry inhabitants, are blown away by Alaskan hospitality, and stage an impromptu bikepacker party in the wilderness. This is Bikepacking Alaska, episode two. Alaskans are amazing. So we're at the Klutna Lakeside Trail and it's absolutely beautiful here. So after our warm up in the Kenai, we cycled north out of Anchorage to start the first main section of our journey, the ride between Alaska's two biggest cities of Anchorage and Fairbanks. I really wanted to explore properly rather than taking the direct route. So on the very first day, we decided to turn off the highway for an out and back detour to visit a Klutna Lake, which I'd heard had a really cool lakeside trail that was absolutely perfect for bike packing. Oh, beautiful. It's stunning, it's good, it's wild. We haven't seen much humans at all and we're gonna slip in on the bank of, of the lake and it, yeah, that's gonna be extremely peaceful. And yeah, just couldn't be dreaming of anything better today. So very happy. Eglutna Lake was the, I think the, one of the most wild campsites we had because we were in the middle of the forest, like so close to a wonderful lake. And um, we, we make a fire. At the morning, the lake was like a mirror. And uh, it was so beautiful with the mountain in the lake. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know what can I say. We were actually getting out of Palmer and it was getting late and uh, we found like a lake on the map um, and we thought that would be like a great idea to pitch the tent nearby this lake. At the end, someone just rocked up and was like, opened this window and it was like, what are you guys looking after? And we um, just clearly said that we were actually looking for a place to camp. And, and he came back with his wife and was like, do you guys need a place to crash? We get a massive basement, so you guys are more than welcome. And that was the first time we got uh, spontaneously hosted in, uh, in Alaska. So aside from obviously getting a bed and being treated to some great hospitality, the other really good thing that came from staying with Jody and Carolyn was that they told us about an alternative route to the main highway north, a more challenging road up a high mountain pass, a Hatcher Pass, which had only just reopened for the summer a week before, with heavy snow making it impassable through the winter months. It was, I think, the most beautiful road we did uh, for the moment. Really, I really appreciate this part of the travel. How are you feeling? I can't talk. <laughs> the road up over Hatcher Pass was beautiful and it also allowed us to make another detour up into Archangel Valley, where we wanted to get off the bikes to do a bit of hiking and explore. So it's around about 11.30 at night and the sun's going to be setting in about the next 30 minutes or so but it's still light and it's not really ever going to get dark because it's Alaska and the solstice was about a week ago. I'm currently hiking up to a viewpoint above where we've camped. Um, it's been raining for most of the last five or six hours so we were pinned down in our tents for a long time but it's finally cleared, so I'm on my way up. The other two are too tired, so they're gonna sleep, <laughs> um, which is fair enough. So I'm gonna buy myself for this one. But yeah, super, super excited to see the views up here. It's absolutely mad how beautiful it is here. So we have stashed the bikes in the brush and we're now hiking up to see a glacier, Bomber Glacier, 
and it's around something like six to eight hours hiking, we think. We kind of told different things, so looking forward to seeing it. Chloe's extremely confident that it's going to be really sunny, warm, <laughs> and beautiful all day. It's just me being overly optimistic. Yeah, so we weren't at all sure what to expect from the hike up to the Reed Lakes as we heard a few conflicting accounts of what the trail would be like and how long it would take. A few people had told us that reaching the upper lake might not be possible as there would still be a lot of snow up there, but in the end it actually wasn't too bad and we made it up a lot quicker than we'd originally expected. So we made it to the upper Reed Lake and it's just insane. Loved it. It was slightly different than what we used to do anyway. Um, also reminds me home somehow. And yeah, it was quite surprising the, the change of uh, scenery and um, conditions as well. Within, within two hours walking, we went from, from a very dry and kind of warm place up to knee deep snow so um, they were quite surprising and now that was stunning um, fortunately it was a bit cloudy so we didn't see much of the glacier or summits around but um, yeah it was stunning it's absolutely worth it worth the detour worth the climb it was good to see a bit of wildlife up there um, and yeah they, they were quite cute we actually succeeded to approach them quite closely and yeah there was a funny moment just staring at each other and meanwhile they were staring at us like what are you guys doing like this is my home just get out of here so that was quite interesting so this alaskan hospitality is getting a little bit over the top so we turned up at the chalet and they just very almost immediately offered us to stay at the chalet for free. Um, so we have a chalet and we have access to a sauna and apparently breakfast tomorrow morning as well. <laughs> so And private concert. And and yeah, private music as well. <laughs> so yeah, we're all just pretty stunned and pretty humbled by how ludicrously generous um, Alaskans are. And we were so welcoming, like uh, free food, free sleep free sauna and it was amazing to share that with like local people. Okay so we wanted to leave in uh, good weather but unfortunately it's still looking a bit grim. Yep. So we're gonna have to just do the pass in uh, low visibility and hope for the best. Hopefully it'll be tropical once we get above the clouds. <laughs> um, it's forecasted. Yeah so Guess two more kilometers of climbing. Actually, does look pretty steep from here, doesn't it? It looks pretty steep. Looks pretty steep. <laughs> muddy as well. Pretty steep, muddy, and gravelly. Yep, that's all we want. Oh well, let's see how it goes. See you on the top. I can't talk. <laughs> we made it back down from Hatcher Pass and rejoined the main parks highway. The road would be following all the way to Fairbanks. We started riding north and made a short detour off the road to visit the town of Talkeetna as we'd heard it was a cool place to grab a beer and listen to some live music. We were also treated to our first clear view of Denali, the highest mountain in North America, with the best sunset we'd seen so far in Alaska. Denali is usually pretty wrapped up in the clouds so it was super special to be able to see it properly. So this is the much less glamorous side to bike touring that no one ever shows you in the videos. We spend a lot of our time at supermarkets, um, packing food into our bags and planning out where the next supermarket's gonna be so where we can get food. So today we are um, at a place called Cubby Supermarket. The next resupply is probably gonna be in two or three days. So we've got three or four days worth of food just to be on the safe side. But yeah, no one really shows this in videos. So I thought I should. After Talkeetna, there was no alternative to the highway, so we settled into the rhythm of life on the road. 
It rained a fair bit, but not too much, and it was great to watch the landscapes change as we progressed north. Look at him. Look at him. There's a sign that says the last cafe for 75 miles, and this man just beelined for it. I've never seen anyone swerve off course more quickly. I'm not a dick. He's not an addict, guys. He doesn't have a coffee problem. Just so we're completely clear on that. So good. I'll go with it. <laughs> oh, he choked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's oh, the man. saddest. That's the saddest sign I've ever seen. Oh, you'll get over oh. it. You'll get over it. Look at what we've got to, walk, to go towards. Yeah, Look but there's that. no coffee shop over there. But so there's beautiful mountains. You don't need coffee Where when you got that. The wrong way. There's no coffee. Junky. <laughs> <laughs> So we're here at the supermarket and some lady just walked up to us and gave us three beers. Had three beers. Actually. Had three beers. This stuff doesn't really happen outside of Alaska, at least in my experience. <laughs> and yet here it seems to happen at most supermarkets. We have someone coming up, coming up to us and saying hello and giving us stuff. So happy days. <laughs> Thank you, Alaska. Yeah, so where are you from and where are you going? Uh, from Anchorage and heading to Hebron, and nationality is Japanese. Amazing. Yes. How are you liking Alaska so far? Too big. Too yeah. big for nature. It's too big. Too big. Too big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim Lowe. I'm Bernice Fagino, and this is my husband. These are our wonderful warm ferrets. Uh, yes. Yes, that we had a few days ago. Um, In Anchorage, Alaska. In Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> and then we drove 180 miles to bring pizza, pizza and beer. <laughs> <laughs>